Today is a really good day. We got balloons in the evening. We have mud boils, some kind of fancy uh, geological phenomenon in the valley. We have all sorts of good stuff. So it's going to be a great day. And right now, the boys and I are taking a walk. But stay tuned for the rest of the video because I'm sure it'll be interesting. Later in the day, we went on a hike with the local Sierra Club and a hydrogeologist to a place that's fairly unique in the central New York area. It's a place where water percolates up through the ground and brings with it a whole lot of mud from around the area. And this area where we're standing in right now is a place where the ground has sunk down in because of the silt and sediment that is being carried up through these things they call mud boils. They're not really boiling. They're just underground springs that just carry an awful lot of mud. So this whole area we're standing in, all these weeds and everything that you see in the picture, used to be a farm, a cornfield, and it all kind of caved in. And now it's just uh, um, weeds where it's just uneven ground that uh, continues to cave in. You can see the dead trees in front of us, and we hacked our way through some of the Phragmites and brush and weeds and got over to where the dead trees were, where it was just all mud. The reason the trees are dead is because the water has saturated the soil underneath and percolated up and brought all this mud to it. So this was kind of a mud volcano. And you could walk on this because it's fairly dry this year, and we did. And our host and geological expert showed us the way and some of the dangers of walking on the mud. It can quickly turn into quicksand if there's any kind of heavy motion or stuff. Um, and he showed us how to get out of the quicksand <laughs> or the quick mud, whatever it was. But um, it was pretty interesting. So how thick do you think this mud is? Oh. This mud is probably about... 30 to 40 feet because there's, there's been subsidence underneath here. Remember that this so land used to be about 20 feet high. Oh yeah. yeah. How long ago? So does it take? To walk out there and get our feet stuck? You, you, you can, but do it carefully. Don't walk. Don't walk in my steps. <laughs> How long ago was this land up level to there? 2011. Well, we're not sinking down. Hey Rick, it was nice but, knowing you. But most of it it occurred between 2011 and 2012. Going in quick. Uh -huh. Okay. Feel suck. Feel suck out. Okay. Yeah. This is this is mud boil sediment. Toe heel, toe heel. And just to the right of us, as um, was a real active mud boil spring that you could see. <laughs> if, if you want to get close enough, you can actually see the sand just sort of roiling. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. See the expanse. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Cool. Now watch what will happen. It'll it'll stop. The sand is settling. Pressure builds up and then all of a sudden it'll flow again. Ah, saw some bubbles. Yeah, those bubbles are probably the organic material that's buried in with the sediment. There you go. Actually, by us being on here, we're actually adding weight. Yeah. And so it might influence it somewhat. Now that vent is not straight down. That vent is very circuitous. And in it, you're going to have a coarser sand at the bottom and a finer sand as you get higher up. So that, it looks like all the water's pretty clear though. It is. Generally what happens is, if a vent forms and becomes somewhat permanent, there's enough sand that the water flows up through the sand and doesn't interact with the clay and silt. You know, okay. Since it doesn't interact with clay and so it doesn't pick it up. So a stable mud boil will be clear and unstable will be turbid. If you want to, just dip your pinky in there and tell us what flavor we got. Oh, sulfur, I can smell it already. Well, oh. salt, salt. well that's from the iron bacteria, but this clear water should be just salty, right? 
It's probably just 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 a pinky. Just just put a pinky and then just taste it. <laughs> I love when I tell my students. You had to go over two. Black. Here, lick this raw. Yeah, definitely. Like, ah. Definitely salty. What's what do you think the saturation is? Here, it's generally. Come on, Bill. The wells got up to about 40, 45 percent. So these are probably around 30 to 20. About 30 to 20 percent. Yeah. So we then walked down the mud boil to where the water from the mud boil comes into a local stream and we saw the damage that the mud boils turn the stream um, very muddy, turbid, and uh, do a lot of damage to the water quality and the habitat for fish on a stream that used to run very clear. So all the black sediment and all the rest sediment, again, sulfur bacteria, iron bacteria, this is just water that's coming up out of a multitude of small mud boil vents, <laughs> rather salty in taste, but clear water. These have been here a while. And right here, you can see one that you can call a sand boil. You can see the sand is just constantly rolling right underneath here. That's what we got coming out here. Mm -hmm. Huge amounts of sand just coming up. Yeah, hey, you got one right, right there, there too. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah. You already found it. There's a small one right here. So this is this topography here is raised up just by the the pressure bringing the silt up, right? The pressure bringing the silt up. It's not not raised because of underground pressure. It's raised because these sediments have settled out from the vent. The ground hasn't heaved up. This this sediment has piled up. Right. I wouldn't want to do that one more, one more time. time unless you know exactly where you are. Okay, there we go. Oh, I'm going to the parkway. They have uh, two ponds. Okay, thank you. There are salt the right ponds. So, yeah. what? Three, three, and, three no. and a half? Yeah. Even like that. This is like the coldest winter a couple oh. years ago. And then we got here. Amazing. There's same, two same reasons why. Right. Number one is probably salt, and number two is the <laughs> temperature. Um, we have a so that's if you were here, if you had the fortune of being here when there was a, a 3.0 or something like that, you would be seeing this happening if, all over the and place. And if you were standing here, you would be sinking in. Goodbye. Quick yeah. chicken. <laughs> video of that, you know. When I get the high school kids out and they do this, they're all going up and down. <laughs> I want to get a video of your foot here in a moment. Oh, this, <laughs> right here, right here. Oh, this is the oh, mother of know, all so. mud pie <laughs> factories right here. Just amazing. So we learned that the disturbing the mud and kind of moving it with uh, any kind of force brings the water back out of it. It's called liquefaction, and it happens in earthquakes frequently where buildings and people get sucked into the ground. Um, so this was really cool, and we did this all over the place. But then it was time to leave, and we hacked our way back out through the bushes and crossing streams and hazards and uh, ended up back at our cars. Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe for more interesting adventures throughout central New York and the Northeast. Bye.